we say, another week, another set of beer reviews. This one I got from my main man, Dave's TV, down in Florida, Everglades Ale Company, the Everglades Fishing Company Ale. And I think this is actually made by a big and tackle shop, if memory serves correctly. So I'm intrigued to see how a non-brewery makes their beer and how good it really is. Let's see what it's all about right after the intro. Into the Midland studio with your host, yours truly, Nutmeg 2, Palmetto. This, again, as I said, a little gift I got from Dave's TV. Sub to him if you're not already, although he's over 300 now. So if you're sub to me, I find it hard to believe you're not sub to him. Uh, Everglades Fishing Company Ale. I know Dave reviewed this which, with one of his buddies. I can't remember whether it was Ross the Boss or one of his other cohorts down in Central Florida. But I think, I think if memory serves correctly, this is brewed by a bait and tackle shop. It just says brewed and packaged by Everglades Ale Company in Naples, Florida. So that would make you think it's a, uh, it is, you know, a brewery. But <clears throat> I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly from Dave's video that it was a bait and tackle shop. So I'm excited to try that because you know, I'm not super unfamiliar with non-breweries making beer because there's a cycling shop up in Simpsonville that makes their own weed ale. So, and I saw that, I was like, oh wow, that's really cool. You're not a brewery, but you're making something that people come in, get their bike serviced or buy parts or whatever, and have a beer that you made there in the cycle shop. So that's kind of awesome. This is of course an ale. And if ales are your thing, Go down in the comments below. There'll be a playlist pinned in the first comment. And that'll show you my thoughts of all the other ales I reviewed on the channel. So if you like what I think about this beer, and you're like, okay, maybe ales are my thing, and not so much into the beer scene, and kind of don't know where to start, and you think ales are your thing, click the playlist, and kind of get a overall perspective of what other ales are like, or at least the ones I've tried, and maybe that will spark your interest into going through that. There is a little blurb on the side. Everglades National Park protects an unparalleled landscape that provides important habitat for numerous rare and endangered species like the manatee, American crocodile, and the elusive Florida panther. Not the hockey team. Celebrate one of America's great national parks while enjoying some of Florida's greatest beer. And it's got this pretty cool established 2021 little Everglades Brewing Company logo on the side. The front's pretty cool. Very rustic, very backwoods. Got that red X with a, the seal of the state of Florida uh, all over the top of it. With of course that fish on it, whether it's as a striper or a largemouth bass or um, something like that. And this checks in at 5%, so it's probably gonna be a nice easy sipper. So, uh, untapped, there's no real details other than the fact that it, Untapped is actually describing as an amber lager. So, I mean, I'll trust the can. 
because obviously the person that brewed it is the person that made the label. They're the ones that are calling this an ale. So I'll trust the can. However, it what is uh, remain to be seen that the untapped is referring to it as a lager uh, and an amber at that. So that's interesting. Uh, ABV is the same on there, 5%. Not a lot of check-ins, only 344 total for, albeit with a small sample size, a global rank, ranking of 3.51, so right in the middle of the road. Now, it's not wasting more time, right? Let's crack this open. Nice and loud. I don't think that's amber. Well, as you can see, it's most definitely not an amber lager, despite the fact that I'm using lager glass. Shh, don't shame me, Europeans. <laughs> um, yeah, that's definitely not an amber color. That's pretty light. But the shadow, you can pretty clearly see the shadow on my fingers through the beer. I mean, from my end, I got the obvious the logo in the middle, which is a little tough, but. <laughs> I mean, I could, you could see, you, you could see the shadow on my fingers through that pretty well. Nice, rich, creamy head. That bright yellow, almost golden, like pure golden color. Very clean looking. A little bit of bubbles on the side of the glass. A little carbonation going up. Get a nose. Now, when I pop this, or rather when I poured it, I got a burst of lemony sensation, which I'm not getting now. I'm getting kind of that funky corn type of, ironically enough, lager aroma. So, I mean, it, it's funny because it's definitely passing the eye test as a lager, and it's definitely passing the smell test as a lager. So, I mean, it's definitely not amber, so that's just blatantly wrong. But, I mean, I, I'm definitely getting more lager vibes from this than ale vibes. But, well, we'll see. I mean, they still, they, they call it an ale, we'll, and uh, I'll believe them. That's the way they labeled it, so let's take a sip. Interesting. So, Carbonation is definitely still going up on that. Um, I'm kind of half in, half out on what to really classify this as because it has a very ale mouthfeel. You know, it's light. It's got a little bit of a cool, refreshing note to it. Um, but the flavor is much more lager. It's got that kind of, as Rajopolis says, vegetable type of quality to it. I, the flavor I get, it kind of is like a, almost like a green bean or a peas type of flavor. Definitely kind of veggie. Um, yeah, I, I, it's the, I mean, it's not a bad beer. It's definitely easily crushable. Probably very easy to chug. Pretty sessionable. You could definitely crack open a few of these out in your canoe fishing in the lagoon um out on the lake uh you could definitely you could definitely crush these back uh pretty easily so but uh, yeah I, like i can't really put my finger necessarily on whether it's more ale or lager because it feels like an ale but it tastes more like a lager and um i don't know if that was intended or you know i mean maybe it's just the byproduct of not a uh, kind of amateur brewer making a beer and, and they made a good product but i'm not so much sure at what the uh if it was you know if like the marketing aspect of it was kind of off base or not because it's kind of hidden it, it's kind of hitting both notes on the flavor and it totally went more lager on the appearance on the aroma that sort of thing so i'm thinking like other than other than the mouthfeel, I think this probably would classify more as a lager than an ale. It's a decent enough beer. If you gave me another one, I probably I wouldn't turn it down. 
I don't know if I'd rush out to buy it, but um, I definitely would not turn it down if you passed me another one. Definitely got a lot of that vegetal type of notes, flavor in there, uh, for lack of a better word. Got, got some quote unquote green sensation in there. In any event, thanks again, Dave's TV, for sending me this way. Pop my pop his video of this of this his review of this beer up there, so you can check that out. If you like what you saw from me, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. If you want what I think of other ales, just hit that link in the comments below for the playlist to all the other ales I've tried. If you want to recommend a beer, recommend a beer to me, or maybe send me a beer like Dave did. Email me, nutmeg2palmetto at gmail.com. And if you want the rest of my insanity and hijinks, follow me on my social media channels, TikTok and Instagram, at nutmeg2palmetto. I'm going to finish this. This is a pretty easy sipper, so pretty easy to finish. No complaints. Cheers, folks. I'll see you next time.